All right, hello everyone. We're back again with another YAD video, and today we're going to be doing the form option. Um, I like the form option because you can put things in columns, and to me, it just looks better. <laughs> but that's me. Uh, <laughs> Also, in this video, I'm kind of responding to Colin over at PCTLC about using a button to open up a terminal and perform some kind of command. I'm going to use two different examples. I've already made the application, but I'm going to show you everything that's involved with it. I went ahead and made it before the video because I wanted it to take less time. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Now, first thing I'm going to do is open up the application. And I called this one YAD Test 2. So YAD, and let me scroll over here to YAD Test 2. And here it is. Now you notice we have this picture in here. Uh, I made that picture in GIMP. And we have six buttons in three columns. We have our little title bar icon, and I put no buttons on it. Usually, if you don't put no buttons, there will be a close and an OK button down here at the bottom. If you want that, that's fine. You can also make those buttons say whatever you want, just like we did in the other video. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, before I press on any of this stuff, I'm going to show you what this application is made of. So let's just get into it. I'm going to minimize this. Okay. Here's what we're doing. YAD test 2. Okay. I'll go ahead and leave that open. And I've got this full screen. I've already adjusted uh, the font size to hopefully help. So let's just go through everything here that YAD is doing, okay? And just like in the last video, I'm using user bin envelop bash. And Bruce gave me a good comment about that. He said something like 140 million bash scripts are going to stop working. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. I told him, I think this is just an insurance policy. You know, just in case something does happen, nothing may happen. I don't know. But this is kind of just like an insurance policy. Just in case when they do these changes to bash, you know, the script will keep working. But then again, let me, let me clarify. I'm not saying your scripts are going to stop working if they say crunch bang, bin bash. I don't know. I just don't know. Okay, enough of that. Let's go through what's going on here in this application. Let me pull this application up so we can kind of look at it while we're going over it. All right, we're calling YAD. Oop. Here, let's do this. Always on top. Okay, that way it won't disappear now. And we are using the form option. So what the form option does, it gives you this ability to have these columns right here. If you can see the buttons that are uh, being highlighted back and forth like that. I have it set so it will appear in the center of the screen. I gave this one some borders. I did not do that in the last video. And what that, it's just a, a border around the outside of the window. Okay. In my window icon, this little icon right here, I went ahead and I'm using one of my icons. And I had to, for this one, I had to put the complete path to it. Um, you can use just the name of an icon that's in your icon theme that you're using. But since this is not in the icon theme, I'm having to put the actual path to the icon. The title of the window is Mio Accessories, and you can see that right here on the title bar. I've given it three columns, 
one, two, three. No buttons, I've already talked about that. And I want this image, this right here, Neo Linux Accessories, I want it at the top of the GUI. Okay? And now we have, since we're going to be using an image, we have to put the path to the image that we want to use. And let me just show you that image. Let's see, I'm going to minimize this because it'll stay in, it'll stay on top. Um, let me open up another. This will just be quicker for me. User, share, go down to Neo Linux. Icons. And here's that image. Let me open it with my image viewer. It's actually a uh, transparent background, but I made that image to the size of the window. I had already made the three columns, so I kind of, when I went into GIMP and made that, I made it the size of th uh, the three columns that the buttons are using. And if you notice, I have nothing up here about the height of the window or the width of the window. That image is setting the width of the window, if that makes sense. Now for our first button, if you remember in yesterday's video, we made, instead of right here where it says field, it said button. But this is form. so. It has to be field instead of button. All right. Now the first one, this will open up Xterm and run top. So that's the label on the button top. Use a separator, exclamation point for a separator. This is the icon, the little icon there. And another thing I did differently on this, I didn't put uh, a tooltip. You don't have to put a tooltip if you don't want to. Now another thing, this has to be before each executable, FBTN. And I cannot remember what FBTN stands for. Uh, I think it might stand for Frat Boys Take Narcotics. <laughs> not what it stands for but it sounded good <laughs> so our executable is we're running X term dash E that's for execute and here's what we want it to execute top so let's go ahead and push that button and there it is that's X term and it's running top. So I'm going to hit control C. All right. Now the second one, uh, this is something we're going to fix. If you notice, I've got top, system upgrade, calendar. What I want to do is have all these text editor windows on the bottom. So it looks like I need to change places with PyCom and System Upgrade. If you'll notice here, the first two up here, we have Top and System Upgrade. Top, System Upgrade. Then it goes to the next two. Calendar, Auto Start. Calendar, Auto Start. PyCom, RCXML. PyCom, RCXML. So I want to change places between PyCom and System Upgrade. So what I will do, I'll come up here above System Upgrade. I will take PyCom and move it up there. And 
I will take system upgrade and move it down there and then I'll get rid of that extra line right there save it close this and we'll run it again to see if that fixed it yeah test 2 there we go and actually I would like to swap places with system upgrade and calendar but I'm not going to I'm just showing you basically how to do a few things here Let me go ahead and put that back on top so the next one in line is now pycom.conf that's the label on the button text editor that's the icon over here and here's the executable leaf pad and I want to go and open my pycom.conf file which is found in my home folder dot config pycom.conf so let's open that and see if it works and there it is my pycom.conf so I can edit that if I want to the next one is a calendar that's the label exclamation point divider and the icon alright you see it right here now this executable I'm running this calendar with YAD so I'm doing YAD calendar I'm telling it not to have any buttons none of the buttons on the bottom I gave it a width of 400 I'm telling it to center on the screen I'm telling it to be undecorated in other words it won't have a title bar and since I don't have a title bar and I don't have buttons on the bottom to close it I'm putting close on unfocus so that when I click anywhere outside of that calendar it's gonna close so let's try that this day oh great let's try that <laughs> and there's the little yad calendar okay so that works and we can close it by clicking anywhere outside of the box of the calendar all right next we have my auto start that's the label divider and icon and again, I'm using LeafPad to call up my auto start file in my home.config open box folder. So let's try that. There's auto start. And there's my auto start file where I can edit it, do whatever I want to with it. Um, next is system upgrade. Now this one, this is another terminal application. Um, that's the label, divider, and the icon. Now what I had to do with this, because you can't run a system upgrade without being root. <coughs> I told Colin <laughs> that I'd be glad to do this. I said, but it may not be the best way. It may not be the right way. And as some people in the Linux community like to say it may not be very elegant <laughs> but I'm not worried about that I don't think Queen Elizabeth is going to be using this <laughs> application <laughs> what I have this doing the executable is calling another uh, another script that I wrote so let me show you that script. Let me minimize this so it won't be in the way. So what I did, I wrote a little tiny script. I named it apt-update.sh, which you see there, that's what it's calling. And in this script, it's very basic. I don't know if you can get the whole line on there. No, it's still not going to show the whole line. It's using PK exec, so you're going to have to, first thing it's going to do 
is ask you to type in your password. And then it's calling for X term to X term to execute an apt get update and an apt get dist upgrade. Okay. Hope that makes sense. So let's try that. click on system upgrade. I get this PK exec window that opens. Enter my password. An X term will open and run an app get update and an app get upgrade, but nothing's going to happen because there are no updates. So this window is going to automatically close once it realizes there's no updates. Boom, there it went. If there had been updates, it would have gone ahead and then uh, did the upgrade. And last but not least, we have our RC XML file. Um, there's the label on the button, the divider, the icon, and the executable calling for the RC XML, XML file in my home folder dot config open box RC XML. All right, let's open that. And there's my RC XML file. Now I just chose all these but all these purposes for these buttons at random. Uh, again, you can do what you want with it. You don't have to do exactly what I did, but hopefully this will help you uh, see a little bit more of what you can actually do with the ad. I don't know if it helps or not, but I hope it does. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. It's Saturday. Got another day of the weekend. Saturday's just begun over here where I live. So you guys have a great weekend and take care. Thanks a lot.